Kim Walker. Kim is the founder and the CEO of Silver Group, which is a consultancy that helps businesses and governments with the aging population. And still with us is Paul Bloxham. Paul is our guest host this morning. Joining us from Sydney, and of course, he is uh, from HSBC. Kim, uh, first of all, kick this off for us from the perspective of businesses. All of these aging populations out there, uh, how do you as a business position yourself to take advantage of that? Well, I think let's go to the previous report talking about the employment and the workplace. You know, it's all very well for the governments to encourage people to stay in the workforce longer, which, of course, with the pension burden that they're all facing, is a, is, is a, is a requirement of, of them all. But what's the point of asking people to stay longer in the workforce if the work environment, the tasks they're being asked to do, are still tasks that are optimised for younger people? Mm. So companies are going to have to rethink the entire... Uh, challenges that they're putting to these older workers if they expect them to remain productive. And of course productivity is critical because we talk about demographic dividend of uh, countries like uh, India which have a young population profile relative to countries like China. And the only way that China is going to be able to continue to compete in this mm. way is by becoming more and more productive. Do you think this is a, a hole in Abenomics? Japan is famous for its aging population but we haven't really heard much from them on how they plan to improve that aspect of their economy? You know, I think, um, having lived in Japan for 10 years myself, I think Japan is, because it's a pioneer in this area, it's learning by osmosis. It's not something that's uh, a sudden change. It's like the boiling frog syndrome. They're just sort of sitting in this pot of hot water and it's getting warmer and warmer and they're not actually doing anything dramatic. They're just moving by the changes. And a lot of their changes are very reluctant changes. Mm -hmm. But uh, as a society, there is a more of an understanding and a tolerance of older people just because they're ahead of the curve. Okay, say hello to our guest host, Paul. Hey, Paul. Hello. Uh, do, you, do you think there's to some degree that there is a, an impact here on lifting productivity by people moving from the countryside to the cities? Is that, is that somewhat offsetting this ageing aging issue for places like India and China? Well, I think obviously uh, the move from the, the, the urban migration is an issue, but I guess uh, the people that we're talking about are probably people who are already in the workforce, so presumably already in the urban centres, and it's a question of how do you make them more productive. I mean, a classic example of this having been done in a, in a modern uh, environment is a BMW factory in Munich that uh, adjusted its work processes uh, to accommodate the needs of older workers. As a consequence, that production line was able to achieve a, an absentee rate of 2%, which was below the, uh, uh, the, the factory average, and increases in productivity all round, and of course, employee satisfaction. Um, now, your firm also helps businesses, not just governments. So Absolutely. what can some of the companies, your clients include StarHub, Standard Chartered, Aqua, Pfizer, uh, what can they do to target, as we called it earlier, silver dollars? Well, I think one of the biggest problems that we encounter as a business when we, uh, when we meet with clients is the immediate uh, uh, instinct to think of this market as being a market for products like uh, adult diapers and things of that nature, you know, assistive devices. But of course, people of my age in their 50s still brush their teeth, they wash their hair, they wear clothes and shoes, and you know, with 52% of high net worth individuals in Asia Pacific, my age and above, these people actually have a lot of money to spend and should be treated as normal consumers. And they're active. I was just looking, I couldn't help laughing when we were showing some of the video, but we were showing uh, the aging population in China, and of course they are so active. They're in the parks working out, doing walking backwards, that's a really popular one, um, but you're right, right, that they, they actually, especially in China, are quite active after their retirement and doing... Absolutely. I think, you know, there is a, a tendency for us to think of today's 50 and 60 year olds as the same as last generation's 50 and 60 year olds and that couldn't be further from the truth. There is a total uh, quantum shift in the behaviour and the attitudes and the lifestyles both uh, but I think the point is that companies that want to do this have to understand that from the age of around 50 physiological changes are inevitable, mm -hmm. relentless, universal and they have to rethink their work practices, their products and services to accommodate those changes. All right. Well, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. That was Kim Walker there of the Silver Group talking about marketing to an older population.